This is the Mac Mini. It's been out for over a year now, and I'm sure you've seen it, heard about it, smelled it. Wait, wait, what? Okay, maybe not that. But it's a new year, and this is still the best deal in the Mac lineup. And you should still get one for 2022. Let's dive in. This one is the base model M1 Mac Mini. It's got the M1 chip, 256 gigabytes of storage, and 8 gigabytes of RAM. More specifically, this is actually a refurbished model from Apple, which I highly recommend. Apple's got an awesome refurbishment program if you can find one in stock. They kind of come and go, but you can find one if you check it every now and again. Okay, when it launched back in November of 2020, it was already a really good deal at $699, but unlike typical Apple products, Mac Mini has actually seen a lot of sales and you can find it discounted pretty regularly for $50 to $100 off the normal price, not to mention the used market. Speaking of pricing, there are quite a few configurations you can choose from when specking this thing out and it can get pretty pricey as you bump up storage options, RAM, etc, etc, but you don't really need all that as I'll explain in a minute. You can also just take a second to mention how much of a ripoff storage upgrade prices are from Apple. I mean, in what world does it cost $200 to go from 256 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes, or $400 to get one terabyte when SSD prices are half that? I missed the part where that's my problem. Okay, sorry, sorry, rant over. The Mac Mini is a small, kind of dull and plain looking hunk of aluminum. It measures about 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches, and it's pretty much identical to the older Intel Mac Minis, but it's a little bit lighter. It's pretty low profile, and it blends in nicely under a monitor or on a desktop. The only indication that this is even on is a small white LED that stays on while the computer is turned on. Around the back, you get a good selection of ports. You get an Ethernet port, two Thunderbolt ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, two USB-A ports, and oddly enough, a headphone jack. This is a great selection, and I've yet to have a time when I needed a port and didn't have one. But rest assured, if you do need additional ports, there's always dongles you can buy for pretty cheap. There's also a vent for the built-in fan, and it does have a fan, but this thing runs whisper quiet. In the year that I've had this thing, I've never heard the fan spin up, and it's never felt hot to the touch. Stop me if you've heard this before, but performance has been excellent for the price. At this point, you know what the M1 chip can do, and you really can push this thing. I mainly use it for video editing and Final Cut Pro, web browsing, things like that. The Mac Mini comes with an 8-core CPU and an 8-core GPU, which is cool because you actually have to pay extra for the 8-core GPU and the new iMac and MacBook Air M1s. As with all the other M1 machines, you're going to get the best performance from the native Apple apps like Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, things like that. But there are plenty of people using these things with other programs, using Apple's Rosetta Translation program, and they work just fine. If you're not sure if your program runs on here, odds are it probably does, but there's plenty of lists online. Here's the Geekbench scores if these do anything for you. This thing can scrub through my Final Cut timeline with 4K video with no issues at all. And I've seen other reviewers mention that it can handle 8K video as well. So no matter what task you're doing, it can probably handle it without much trouble. Just for reference on a random 4K video of mine, it took roughly 6.5 minutes to export a 7 minute video, but it's usually about 1 to 1 for me exporting. That's using a lot of plugins, cuts, edits, things like that. Now the Mini's not perfect, so let's take a minute to mention some issues that I've dealt with and other users have experienced. The number one issue you'll find online is a Bluetooth connection issue. There have been a ton of reports of people having issues with a Bluetooth connection dropping at times or slowing to a crawl when they have multiple peripherals connected. This doesn't affect everyone as I've never had any issues, but I can see how this would get annoying. Just note, this seems to have also been an issue in the older Intel Mac Minis as well, dating back to like 2010, so it seems more like a build issue. Disappointing! One issue that I have had, and it's not a huge deal, but it's been kind of annoying, has been this thing waking up from sleep all the time. For whatever reason, this thing will just wake itself up from sleep and my monitor will turn on and it's super bright in the middle of the night. Like I said, not a huge deal, but kind of annoying. I just usually turn my monitor off when I'm not using it. But if that's the worst thing I have to complain about, that's pretty good. So why buy now with a possible new model coming out at some point this year? Well, let's break it down a little bit. Just going by the leaks up to this point, if a new model is released this year, we're most likely looking at a price bump. Apple's not going to release a new model without a performance enhancement, which means either the rumored M2 chip or a new model that has the more expensive M1 Pro or Pro Max chips from the MacBooks. Second, we don't know when the new model is actually going to release. Rumors are all over the map with some people saying the spring, others pointing to a fall release, but they also said Apple was going to announce it last fall too, so either way we can't say for sure and you could be waiting till even 2023. And lastly, this thing is strong enough as it is now. I've had virtually zero slowdowns in my use case and it's actually available now at a good price, so you can actually go out and buy it. So who's this for? Well, as much as I love this thing, it's not for everyone. Anyone that wants a mobile experience won't be happy with this as it's made for desktop use. I find I'm more productive working at a desk, so this works perfectly for me. You also have to have a few peripherals to make this thing work, like a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. 
while these are added expenses, I actually like this because you can choose, say, your favorite Logitech mouse, pair it with your Apple keyboard and widescreen monitor, or any combination as cheap or as expensive as you like. Also, remember that super expensive memory upgrade I mentioned earlier? Well, I just bought a separate 2 gigabyte SSD in this metal enclosure, and it's been awesome. It was about a quarter of the price, and transfer speeds are crazy fast. But I will say that this is probably not going to be for super power users. I'm talking like multiple 8K video streams, heavy rendering, or things like that. The Mini is powerful, but I feel like it would struggle under those conditions. That's not going to apply to 99% of people looking for a new machine. So yeah, this thing's awesome, and pretty affordable. I'd say it's probably worth it even if you're not planning on video editing and just want a mini computer just for a clean desktop. But anyways, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for stopping by. And if you've subscribed recently, I really appreciate it.